We have Dan from Sarasota, Florida. Dan, I actually might be in Florida this week, by the way. He is an SEO master, a blog post connoisseur. Uh, he's been writing for now, bam. He's been in the real estate industry for a couple of years now, and he's a father of two. Did I miss anything, Dan? Three. No. Nope. Father of three. 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 Mr. Kid. I wish it was only two. My girlfriend also thinks he's super cute, so I won't let him I won't let her follow him anymore. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward moments. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, get us started here, Dan. Um, I don't think we need a whole introduction about your career or anything because you've no. been here a few times. No, um, we're good. Um, so, uh, yeah, what are we going to go over today? We're talking about SEO, blogging. All yeah, that, so all we're going to yeah, we're gonna jump into um, the power of, of websites, um, leveraging websites and web traffic. So I'm going to start a share my screen. Can everybody see that screen? Yeah. Is that supposed to be a rendering of you? Yeah, this is AI of me. I put in um, just the most handsome real estate agent that is cunning, smart, old, but looks great. And it came up with this picture. So um, <laughs> this is me, guys. This is me. Don't look at the picture here because this shows a little bit of, you know, I'm a mess today. So we're just here. We're doing the grind. We're doing our thing. So um, it's missing a couple of grays, eh? A whole lot of great brother. Uh, AI is a little bit bad with that because they always want to fix things. You know, AI is into fixing things and I'm a little bit broken. So um, no, today's today's talk is going to be a little bit interesting because I think it covers some things that everyone knows, um, everyone uses, and no one really utilizes. And I think that there's some, you know, big, powerful things inside what we're going to talk about that is super simple, really, really uh, successful in terms of lead generation and I think overlooked constantly. So we're going to look at some, one of the most underwhelming pieces of marketing you can have, which is your website and whether your website is going to be a CRM, uh, just a landing page website, whether you have, you know, your website, you could say, Dan, I don't have one. And I'm saying, okay, well, what is your Facebook profile public? And so it's basically at the end of the day, we're looking at any traffic that we can drive into our our division of life, whether it be, you know, looking for Dan McKinnon, whether you end up on my website, one of my landing pages, anything like that, how can we move people in general that are looking for us or what we do down the funnel? Now, I think that this is important to me for a couple of different reasons. One thing I'm going to ask is if everybody wants to drop in the chat, if you have a CRM, just write CRM. If you have a regular website, just say regular website. If you don't have one, drop it and just say, don't have one. I'd love to know. And it, I can't see the chat. So maybe when that's all done, you guys can just let me know. Um, but I'd love to know what you guys are using and how it's going to be utilized. Because as we go through this, this is going to be a three-part kind of series, possibly four. It's going to be three for the most part. There's nine different sections on understanding the web in general, understanding SEO, blogging, analytics, and how we can make those changes for a long-term success on lead generation. So if you happen to make, miss any of the next ones, you'll be able to watch these multiple times. I'll have a breakdown at the end of it on some paper, and you can go through it and watch it. At the end of this, um, Kristen's going to drop in the chat as well a PDF. It's a checklist. It's going to be a checklist. We're not going to go over all this stuff today, but I wanted you guys to leave with something. I wanted you to leave with something that you could just start going through and print out yourself, and maybe you only do two things. This checklist isn't like to be master of anything. This checklist is to help move the ball forward. So whenever she drops that in there, Kristen, you can just let everybody know and they can download it. It's a PDF. There's nothing special about it at all. Um, Dan? Yes. Do you want questions? Wait, just at the end or can we can ask as we go? You are more than welcome to just drop questions. If you have questions, use the raise your hand uh, tool. So it's it pops up there. And either I or someone else can just like call it out. Feel free to interrupt if you have questions on things. If you think it's a question where you can write a note and just ask at the end, I may or may not touch on it. So, but I don't mind if anyone wants to stop me. That's perfectly fine. Um, so the reason I think this is super important is this is not only what I did for my career for 12 years is I helped a lot of businesses move from being a small brick and mortar they were to how to get more clients. Um, and that's what any marketing person really at the end of the day, their, their job is. So I was able to do it for a lot of different companies from small little nail salons to larger, um, medical companies. So 
one of the biggest things that you'll realize with any of those companies that, you know, boring services, whether it be plumbing, roofing, anything like that, if you're just, you say you're not in real estate, is you're just going to go to Google and search for it. You're not going to necessarily think like we as realtors think in lead sources, whether it be realtor.com, Zillow, um, you know, the fun word PPC, you know, and that will go into what we're going to talk about in the end. But, um, you know, all these different lead sources, even referral, but do we ever actually think in and I would love to know in the chat, put a Y or N, yes or no in the chat. Do you ever think of just the organic web or Google as a place to get, in, get a lead? I'd love to know if we're, let me see if I can pull up this chat. For some reason, I can't see any of the chat. Kristen, you want to be my mouth on that? You're muted. We have three yeses, four yeses, and two no's. Okay, cool. So if the, you the chat at the bottom, it doesn't pop up for you? No, oh, when you're sharing I, your screen, it's weird. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess. So the great thing about the web is that, you know, it's, it's out there growing. You have all these crazy websites. I'm sure that you've been local and looked up something about a neighborhood and, you know, typed in, um, I don't know, what's a neighborhood here? Calusa. Calusa is a neighborhood here. You probably popped in Calusa neighborhood information. You'll probably get a bunch of realtors in the area that are writing um, a paragraph and adding a couple pictures. And you may say that, you know, they're not the builder. What are they doing here? Now, these are all blog posts. We're going to jump into it. So um, these are all the the really boring things of lead source. So we're going to jump back in the presentation because I got a little sideways. So Sean did a really good job of introducing me. I'm Dan McKinnon. I am in the Florida Gulf Coast. So if anyone knows where the West Coast of Florida is, I'm an hour south of Tampa. I'm a Johnson & Wales University alumni. I went to school up in Providence, Rhode Island for advertising and communications. Um, I founded Subculture Marketing. So this is all the stuff we're going to talk about. Didn't come from my time in real estate. It came from my time as running a marketing agency up in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, I now run Local Life Homes with Real Broker here in the state of Florida. Feel free to go to my website, www.locallifehomes.com. You're going to be able to see a lot of stuff that I'm working on that we're talking about today. Um, so once again, most of the pictures on this I used, we've been messing with, um, you know, Sean and Kristen and I are, are messing with some AI stuff that we want to really bring to the group here and kind of teach. So we've been messing with some things. So any of the pictures say today, um, I used over at Runway. Runway is an AI platform. Um, they have like 75 free credits if you sign up for it and you can just do text to type. They also do text to video um, and things like that. So check out runway.ai. I believe it's runway.ai. If not, Dan, Kristen, yes. Just to let people know too, because everyone will be familiar with this. Canva does an AI now awesome. and generates images because everyone Perfect. knows Canva. If, like, if you want to so, just get started, yeah, yeah. go to so, Canva. They're doing stuff like this amazingly now. That's awesome. Thanks for adding that, Sean. So any of this stuff like that, I... I tend to use, especially for presentations like this, we don't really need, um, unless it's a picture of me, we really don't need too much, especially presentations in general. That same goes with websites. Websites, unless you're showing a location, you don't really have to, to be too specific. Now, if we're showing a community, that's a totally different thing because people want information. So that's what we're going to talk about today is creating um, this massive source of information for your potential clients in the future. Um. We're going to, the importance of online presence, I, I, since I can't see the chat, this is no more fun, um, but I would assume that actually show me a ra raise of hands who's been in real estate for more than 10 years. My hand, where's my hand? Oh, you don't have to there. raise the digital hand, Kristen. <laughs> I like that though. All right. So if, if there's only really oh, two yeah. people, there we go. I like it, Susan. Um, so if anyone knows that the web, the web in general has never been a big source of lead generation before, you know, probably 2010, before the raise of Zillow and them starting to utilize um, how they're going to give out leads, people have always gotten, you know, online inquiries, but we are not seeing as much of that for the past, you know, before 10 years ago or so. Um, Susan and Kristen probably have seen that as well, where the internet is really, really changing the way things are done. Now, that's happened over time as the internet has happened. But now with COVID, when COVID happened, we we worked at such a place where we weren't leaving and talking to coworkers. We're not leaving and talking to peers. So what do we do? We go right to the internet. Now, that has accelerated our trust system with the internet. Now, think about that. At the Every single day when we're putting our stuff out there on online, whether it be on content, social media, and like that, we're doing we're doing a couple of things. One of the things we're doing is like, know, and trust. Does everybody know that? Shake your head if you, you're with me on this one. 
like, know, and trust. And that's what we're trying to get everyone to do is like, know, and trust us. Now with the internet, when everybody went, you know, peerless and they went to just searching the internet, we all became a little bit faceless unless you were out there doing the content, making yourself um, genuine and believable. Now, what, what the other thing that was, you know, interesting over the past couple of years is people have moved away from the other piece is research. Now, when people went faceless and they went peerless, when I say peerless, I mean like, you know, we're not talking to people at the water cooler. We're not saying who you use as a realtor. We're just going to Google and saying, who's the best realtor? Now, these are all research-based things. So like, know, and trust will come in a different pattern form for these people that are doing research through the internet, through facts, knowledge, things like that, reading versus swiping on a phone and seeing video and being like, I like that guy, Sean, he's kind of funny. And so you're going to get a different set of clientele that are moving at a little bit of a slower pace because it's their pace. It's their pace of they want to read, they want to um, understand, they want to get the facts. So that's where COVID has accelerated even more for us is that you almost have to be a dual-toned agent. You almost have to have a dual-toned um, business. And when dual-toned, you have to have that frontward facing content, the video, the stuff we talk about, that Kristen and Sean talk about on here all the time. That's super important. I'm not saying get rid of that at all, but there's a lot of stuff that people don't realize that is going to be on the other side of things and bring in a lot of free leads. Right, let me say that again, free leads. So um, according to the National this is a little fun fact, 93% of home buyers use online resources in their home search. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of people that move from out of state here. So what is the first thing they do? They go online. They don't, they don't go to Instagram. They don't go to TikTok. They go online to Google and they go, moving to Sarasota. What, what are towns around Sarasota? What are towns around Milwaukee? What are towns around you know, Toronto? All these places they're going to search. And you're going to have that starting point. Now, I don't know about you, but there's a handful of industries where I've gone right to the first person. I was like, cool, you look professional enough. I'm going to give you a call and I'm going to hire you. Now, most people don't think of realtors that way because we handle a lot of equity and money and all these things. But there's a lot of people that make those decisions because of that. So how many more people are we not getting in front of being one of the first three or four people they see in this 93% um, of, of people using it to research? Um, I don't know about this second one. I put this on here because it was debatable. Websites drive 10 times more conversions compared to social media. No, that's probably a lie, but I put it on there for all of us to read. Um, I would say this though. The biggest piece in there is conversions. And I left it in there for that piece because social media at the end of the day is going to have us on a loop. We're all scrolling. We're all flicking, right? It is hard enough for us all to come up with a call to action to get people to click and go onto our website. It's different if they're already on our website. Does, he, does that make sense? So it's great when social media paints us as this like, know, and trust, but half the people don't have our phone number. Half the people don't know our website. Half the people don't know our, our um, email. Now with a website and all these CRM things, and you're saying, Dan, we can create all of this great stuff and people come to it. Well, that's where our CRM comes in. And we're going to be grabbing all of that information and we're going to be utilizing it for the future. So when these 93% of people come, they may not all want to use us, but we're going to get their information first and, and use that going forward can i ask Today a question before I yeah forget? of course yeah for sure um what's your opinion on uh the free content you offer on your website versus making them sign like it's all free but i mean like making them sign up to access it like if so, you're posting blogs yep. and stuff um should they give their information before they they can access that or um should some of it just be out there that's for a great SEO? question so if, if people don't know, a CRM website usually has a forced registration, um, or most websites can have it too. So you don't have to have a CRM website to do this. You can do it on a regular website. Excuse me. Um, but you can set up a forced registration. Now, I'm sure that you've been onto these sites before where it says like, log, make an account, log in with Facebook, log in with Google, all these things. It's super annoying, but that's the pay to play in terms of looking through all this stuff. Now for my website and my CRM, I have two different platforms for it. I have, if you search organically, you can go to two pages before it makes you register. You get two pages of whatever you land on and then you get one more click and then it's gonna say, hey, you need to register. If I get anyone from PPC, uh, Google Ads, which we're gonna go over in the future, so we'll go cover all this and stuff in the future. If I get it from them, it is an automatic re re registration. So if someone lands on my, because I'm paying like four to $11 for them to land on my page, 
I'm just going to make them. They're going to see that first page that they're landing on. But anytime they try to click on more than three pictures, more if they try to jump to a different property, it's going to be a forced registration. Because two things I want to, which we're going to get into in next slide, actually, is we're going to get into our funnel and understanding where these people fall into. And now if they don't want to give me their information, for me, I don't want to give away too many people floating on my website to not give me their email. I'll lose the one person that doesn't want to you know, sign up. That's fine because I want to capture everyone else. Everyone else will hit the sign up with Facebook, sign up with login with Google, login with Gmail. And then I, that's the most important thing I have. That's the most important thing I need because tidbit here, we're not going to suck into this little piece here, but going forward, when we do talk about PPC and Facebook advertising, we're going to use all those emails. You know what I mean? And that's going to create cheaper advertising, more affordable advertising, because we're going to target the people that already had intent. They had intent to buy a home. They had intent to move to Sarasota, Florida. They had intent to talk to Dan McKinnon. Now, they're, they're much more in my funnel system than someone else that doesn't even want to register, doesn't want to put their stuff. So for me, it's a decision where I know that I have a attractive website. I have the information they need right in front of them. And my info is everywhere. So if they need to contact me, I just figure if they're not ready to be in that intent game, there's no necessary communication back and forth. Plus, I don't want to lose anyone else that will just freely give me their information because I'm going to call them in 10 minutes after they register. Not all the time, but just we'll go from there. So does that answer your question, Sean? Yeah, absolutely. Because I just have like, sorry, I'll, I'll just be quick here. Like no, when fine. you go, like I, I do the PPC and you have to give all your information and my home buyer's guide, you have to give your information, but I want to start blogging on my website. And I was wondering if I should leave that free to get people to go to no. other things or, no. or is that as no information or I was wondering if I should just leave it all. It, it all depends. I mean, you can have it, like I said, where you, where you let it have them, have them join once. And, or, or sorry, uh, look at the page ones and then, you know, require a, a registration or everything. you could even do it too, where, but see, these are things that we're going to go over in, we're going to go over section one through three today, section four. I sound like a salesperson on this one. Section four is all about analytics. So in section four, we're going to actually go over some of our analytics and I'm going to show you guys how to set up Google analytics. And we're going to go in there probably after that section, but to go over the analytics and understand that if, if say you have no forced signups. We're going to look at our website and see that people have been on the website and they stay on the website for three to four pages before they leave. That's freaking awesome. That means it's a low bounce rate. And we'll go over all these numbers. We're getting ahead of ourselves, but we want a low bounce rate, which means that they don't bounce the minute they get in there. So if you have someone coming three or four times, I'm going to look at my whole stack of data and my whole stack of people coming to web my website and go, why am I not letting them register? So I, I have their information and bring it back because I know they want to stay here. Now it's different if I know that my website only has what, you know, they, they land on and bounce, then I need to extend it, extend them and keep them on my website. That's the most important thing because they're not even going to register if they don't want to stay on the website. So there's a couple pieces that you want to look at when it comes to forced registration. And one is we want these people's information. That's all we care about. A website is not going to make or break it. Zillow is always going to be better. Realtor.com is a crappy website and their website's probably better. The only thing we're doing, and we're going to get into this, is having the local expertise. We are getting them over Zillow, over Realtor.com using strategized solutions and strategized or strategy basically to get these people over Zillow and Realtor. It's not about keeping them on our CRM to look at homes. I could care less if someone goes to Zillow and sends me links. Care less about that. Yes, it's more exposure for them to see another agent. But I'm all about the like, know, and trust. I want their information. That's the start process. So for me, if you're spending money, if you're putting the effort in there, I would do forced registrations. If you see a massive decline, if you're like, Dan, I have 100 people coming to my website and two people registered and 98 people left, DM me. We'll go through it together. Like Because there shouldn't be a point where you're making all of this stuff for people to come to the website, peace out, and who are you, you going to call them? Who are you calling? Who are you emailing? So you have an investor special and you want to throw it out there to a hundred emails. You don't have any emails. How are you going to send it out? So that should be the end. So of mine's it. guided, like not to keep them on the website, but to get them to sign up. So I get their info and then they go on a, a, a drip campaign too. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, yeah. And then I'm and so, seeing every time they click on the houses, yeah. it's not really to get them back to the website. It's just to get them set up with something. So exactly. Well, it's... here's the thing is, is like any info is, is the best info. You know what I mean? Like yeah. even if we get someone's, someone's, 
email address, that is fantastic because now we know how to get a hold of them. We can track them. We can put them into the advertising platform. And most likely the email they sign up for is the email they use for Facebook or social media. So now I can, now I can get in front of their face. And so that's all I need. You know what I mean? And, and it's, it's one of those things where you have to know that my website right now, the only reason I blog is to get those random registers and then for me to connect with them. That's it. It's not to, like, yes, it is to inform people. Yes, I'm there to write local content. Yes. No, at the end of the day, all I care about is phone numbers and emails. And I'll say one thing how powerful just getting an email alone is. Like, if they don't even want to buy it for three years, because I, I immediately put them on my email campaign and I can see when they open it. And some of these people open my email like nine times. Yeah. And like, they, I've never spoken to them. They won't answer my calls, but they're still seeing me every well, month when I send them stats and stuff. And see that that's it right there, Sean. And that's that's where we'll get into analytics and understanding, you know, hey, what can we take out of this data? You know, if if people are opening an email nine times, you think they have more intent than person not opening an email? Of course they do. Nine times is, is insane. So I would I would send them a video. Like in you know, this is all stuff for the future, but it's you know, those are different things where you can take intent and and they maybe they don't want to talk on the phone. Maybe they don't want to return emails. You know, so that's it. All right. We're going to go over, like I said, this has a handful of sections. Um, section one, two, and three today is the importance of website and client funnels. We're kind of talking about section one a little bit into it now. Uh, the power SEO. SEO is search engine optimization. Basically, it is the art of directing the content on your website to create one succinct brand. And so when people search the internet for anything under that brand or that subject, you will pop up for free. The art of blogging is section number three, and that's kind of like what we're going to get, get into, and that's kind of like the expansive piece of SEO. So before I get into the sales funnel and get into something confusing, does anyone else have any more questions before we jump in? I'll shut up now. Okay, awesome. Everybody good? All right, great. All right, cool. So raise your, your actual hand and wave to me if you've ever seen a client sales funnel. Yay. We've seen, I saw four hands, everybody. Wow. Four. I also have five people that don't have video on, so I'll, I'll forgive them. Um, so here's the sales funnel and, oh, there you have Miriam. Thank you for raising your hand. I appreciate that. All right. So here's the sales funnel and this is just ba a basic sales funnel. This isn't just real estate specific. This is, um, going to go over just in general psychological behavior in, in buying and processes. Our biggest thing right on top is our lead generation awareness. That is where everything happens for us, whether it be social media or internet or anything like that. Now, we shouldn't really look at anything below number one. There's not much to know unless it's processes. Because if you look up top, awareness is really what we want people to have. They want, we want to be prospecting these people. They want us to be, they, we want that intent. Now, number two is discovery. And that's where we go into qualifying them you're setting up your initial meeting. You're doing some discovery into, you know, what their belief system is, what they really need out of life, all that. And then evaluation is like, you know, making an offer. Intent is negotiation, and um, and, and intent, intent in that purpose, right there, is an intent on their actual sales drive. So that's different than what I'm talking about. Intent to buy, um, and then purchase and loyalty. So you can see that going from number two to six is really just our processes. And if we need help on this, put it in the chat. It's something we can just talk about in the future because marketing and SEO and our web and social media is all that number one. So we're going to stick up in there. And the purpose though is, is to see how far I think I like to think of it this way. It's to see how far we can get these people down the funnel, how quickly we can get them down the funnel. Now we're going to know that, you know, how many people with, with real hands or virtual, if you're not on video, how many people have lead services like a realtor.com, a Zillow, um, like fast live call services, almost everybody. That's awesome. I have them too. Um, they're great. They're expensive. They're really expensive. I don't know where you guys are. They're really expensive. So the, the point is to bring up is there's a premium to pay for down that funnel, right? That we're, we're paying that premium to get these leads down that funnel. I mean, they're, they're at the point of almost evaluation. They're ready to make an offer. You know, you call, you talk to a Zillow person, they're ready to to go, hey, we want to go see this house. We're thinking about it. We've been looking at this area for a while. Boom, done. Those are easy, but we're paying for it. Now, to go back up to that awareness mark, that's why PPC and organic PPC, we can get people at four to twelve dollars on our website. You know, that can turn into a, a paying client. But 
there's a lot more of those clients that go nowhere. And so that's where it's the top of the funnel where we're going to get people that pop out that aren't as deep into the sales process as well as, you know, anyone organic. So, you know, the four to $12 one is PPC and you may get them a little bit more intent, but organic is just anyone looking up anything. So um, that's going to be the process is understanding that that whole top of the bucket, we're not going for when we're blogging, when we're doing social media, we're not looking for the op the um, extremes. We're not looking for virality in a, a million people because we can't we can't help a million people. Our 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 business is different in the fact that yes, it's great to go viral on social. It's great to do that, but we want to get connected. And on the other side, we actually need people in our in our side. So the two extremes, we want to sit in the middle where we're gaining enough organic traffic, we're gaining enough paid traffic, we're getting people off of social, where it kind of has a nice equilibrium and we can actually handle them. So the key elements for a lead capturing website. So utilizing a CRM is definitely always going to be the best bet because it has a built-in monitoring system. Most all CRMs are going to, it's going to understand where these clients are going, where they're staying, how long they're on the website. These are some of the basic analytics a CRM is going to, to understand for you. And they're going to post those analytics back in some sort of reporting form. Hey, Judy, Judy came back to the website and looked for a single family home in this neighborhood, or it's going to give you the exact address, however your CRM does for you. Now, this is always great because we want them to land, register like Sean and I were talking about, and then continue going on so we can learn about them. Now, to get that way, we need these four things. So you, you don't need these four things. These four you know, elements are extremely important for a website to take this all in. So high quality content, which if you've been in any of these masterminds or anything else, I think that we're, we can probably stop saying high quality because at this point, everything that we should be putting out is high quality. There's so many people putting out content that at this point, there's so much crap out there. It has to be high quality. If you're not putting out information that you love, that you're like, I really stand behind that, don't put it out. Um, like, no, don't get me wrong. Like some blog posts can be extremely dry. It's not like I love them. They're not passion projects. But at the same time, I'm not just writing stuff to throw up on the wall and, and writing a random keywords. It's stuff that people can read and, and walk away with. Um, this is says uh, some good stuff. So I don't know what people want to you know, target your audience, what is market trends, blah, blah. There's so many things you can write about um, in real estate outside of just homes. Um, User-friendly design. Now, this is going to be a little bit different for everybody because most 99% of people aren't going to have a designer or be a designer or do this. So it depends on the company you work with. But this is one thing I will say. Control your controllables. So if you have a website, make sure the, the colors and everything are calm. They're going to make people feel at home, at peace, comfortable. Make sure the website doesn't have anything flashing, jumping all over the sides, no music, no crazy stuff that takes over their whole space. Make sure that you are opening your website on different platforms, whether it be on an iPhone. Uh, you can actually go on like... Firefox or Google Chrome. And if you go to like developer options, it should show you. I should probably have a website for this to everybody to try. You could probably just Google see my web see my website in different formats. And you can actually go check what it, your website looks like on a big screen, on an iPad, an iPhone, all that kind of stuff. And now the 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 piece about this that is important is that you always have where I live, we have a lot of older people that move here. The weather is great. They want to move away from the snow. So they get on their tablet, which is not an iPhone. It's probably something like some weird Microsoft tablet. And it's going to pop up my website. What's going to happen is, is most of those people are my buyers. Those are my clients. But when it pops up on their tablet, my website's a mess because it's not updated or optimized to look nice on that. So you guys have to remember that just because we have a website, it doesn't mean that it's always going to be up to date with the best design or layout for people to have that information. And so that's the other thing is that anyone ever been to a website where you just feel overwhelmed? When you get to the website, you're just like, oh my God, this is just too much. I got to leave. Like, it's like anything, like when you get to a new store, a retail outlet, and you're just like, this is everything is everywhere. It's in boxes and it's not organized. And so you have to think as a consumer, think if you are going to buy, and if you're having a hard time coming up with that, think about something that you actually want to go buy and how their websites are laid out to deliver that information. So make sure that you have a user-friendly design. This is one of the things that I spent a good portion of my career on is just looking at people's websites and 
figuring out how that user flow from their eyes looking, it's going to always be on the top left and it's going to scroll just like a reading platform and they're going to look down. And most of the time, I will tell you, 60% of your people on your website are not going to scroll. They're going to click on the same screen that popped up and they're just going to do something or leave. So I have a question. Is it, I don't want to tell you that your name's expert. So can I, can I say hi? It's, hi. it's mode. Um, just well, something hi, mode. to How's kind it going? of. Good. Just something to answer it about mod. user friend. No, because it's French. You're from the East Coast. You should know this, Sean. Oh, I love mod. We talk all the time on Instagram. Anyway, ask your question. Je mod. 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 Um, it's not necessarily a question. It's just to kind of remember that user friendly design is also for accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have visual impairments, hearing impairments and things like that. If it's hard to read for you, someone that has difficulty seeing won't be able to see it. So I've seen text where the colors don't contrast well and like I, I can't read it like at all. Yes. So no, that is see. And these are these are really, really great things. And so thank you for popping on and saying that because, you know, it, it isn't just um you know, visual aid, it's not just your pictures. And you may say, Oh, my God, I don't have cool drone pictures. I don't have this great, cool text or these graphics. No, you just need legible information to attract the people that are coming to your website. So that is mm -hmm. wonderful advice, because you, you know, I mean, whether it be color, um, the impairments are big in the US, we have ADA. Um, so your websites actually need to on a click mm -hmm. of a button transfer. So it's basically all transcribed and um, I don't even know how it comes up with Braille on the screen, but I think it comes up. No, I'm kidding. That was a bad joke. Um, so hopefully no one is. That, that's brilliant though, here. Mo. That, that, that's brilliant. I mm -hmm. that sort of well, video. and here's the thing is, is she, you know, she brings up a good point is if you work in an area that has certain things like that, if you work in maybe a retirement area that has a lot of people that are older like that, they may be using these access accessibility options. But think about this. They're using those accessibility options in Google to search for stuff. So if you're ready so for it, you will be one of the only, website. you will be one of the only people to pop up because no one else is doing it. Same with Spanish. If you're in an area that speaks any sort of Spanish, have either a translator or, or get someone that you know to translate it and create all the same exact, just go down the list to your website, duplicate and just write, actually have it real Spanish. Don't go to Google translate. It's gotta be real Spanish and do that because now we are duplicating and understanding that accessibility piece of it. So thank you, Matt, on that. Uh, clear call to action. So obviously we want, if, we're, if no one's really gonna be scrolling a lot on our website, we wanna have clear call to actions on this stuff. So with things like contact us, view listings, download free buyer's guide. These are things people want. I personally am always, always, always so burnt out from these some of the same um, language we use, like free buyer's guide. I'm like, is that really gonna help people? I hate to say it, but everybody loves that. You know, I mean, it's the same exact thought process that most of these people are going to go through. So yes, keep using it. Keep using the, you know, make sure contact us, call us, you know, here's our information. We want to hear from you. Make this language easy for them to, so it makes it so they want to contact you. Contact forms is a huge one. Live chat isn't always, but I'm going to bring up something in that in a second. Contact forms is just like, you need to have them. So if you are on your website and you don't find a way to contact you and put in name, email, phone number, enter, or name and email, enter. If you don't have a way to get into your subscription or someone to register, figure out a way. Talk to your, your web person, talk to your whoever's helping you with websites. If it's just you, contact me and I will help you. Whatever it is, we want a place for people to land. Now, that's organically. But what happens if we meet someone and we're like, hey, you know, I want you to send over your info. All these forms can can go from just one name and an email all the way to, you know, a buyer, in their intent coming in and that can go right into your CRM. So make sure you're utilizing forms because people will have a much easier time filling something out on their own without you telling them. They're going to want to feel like they, hey, I'll just, you know what? It's just, a, it's just an email. Like, I'm just going to put my name in email. Maybe he'll come up and do that. Now, you don't know how many people have been on your website that have thought about that. Maybe I could just drop my email, but they don't want to go write you an email. They don't want to go hit the contact button. So make sure you're making the levels of accessibility easy for your clients to reach you. And then you don't even know that are there. One of the big things is I, I love about the internet. Um, I guess the internet's a very broad statement nowadays. The one thing I love about websites is that it's on 24-7. So you don't have to be awake. You don't have to be 
even in your office for this to be working for you. So just remember that this is a 24 seven billboard. So things like, you know, your forms, things like your, your user experience and, and their experience on the website and how things are read all matter. They, you know, it could feel like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. It's a, it do, it does though, because you never know when people are going to pop on. Uh, statistics to consider. These are all debatable, whether these are all real or not. Real estate company. Yeah, I don't, I put these all and I was doing some research and stuff and guys, I, I can't tell you that any of these are actually statistically right. So I'm just going to go past them. Sorry about that. Um, SEO. Here's your subtitle, everybody. Um, so SEO is search engine optimization. So does anyone know, has anyone heard of the term SEO before? Let me see hands on the cameras here. Okay. So almost everybody's heard SEO before. Miriam, I love it. Um, so SEO is is super important. It basically is the is the language of Google going through your website and categorizing what the information and the content is about to then deliver it and file it in their system so it's easy to find. Now, there are a lot of different ways over since, I don't know, 20 years at this point, since the internet's really kind of had this organic search tool, that there's been a lot of black hat ways. And I'm sure that a lot of people you guys remember at the bottom of a website, seeing every town and city in your state or every town and city in a, a place. And everyone thought that by putting, you know, the little, uh, we service every little town in this area and it will pop up. Now those things are gone and, and we have a smarter Google and Google being a very large company would hope that they were smart. So their newest rope, I mean, what they, what are they called there? Uh, now I'm going to forget it. They have these uh, bots that they're called search bots and they basically crawl your website and they crawl your website to go through all your content. And it, it basically goes through the content and deciphers on what's important and what's not all on how you write it. So has ever, has anyone ever written a blog in old, like in old form when, when blogging first came out, when you just looked at like a Microsoft word platform, anyone in here? Sean does, but I'm not going to ask. I love it, Susan. I, I, I used to the old like H, uh, what do you call it when you did it? Uh, H3 tags, H tags. That's what we're going to get into. Yeah, yeah. So H yeah. tags. So HTML and stuff too, whatever. Yeah, so we're not going to talk about any coding, but when you go <laughs> on to a blogging, um, blogging or I think it might even be in regular Word stuff now. But if you go into a blogging software, whether you're on WordPress or your CRM website, or you're just putting stuff on your website, there should be a word processor or something to change things from like bold, italicized, larger font, all these things. Now, as this goes into your website, it creates a hierarchy. So if you're going to create a a blog post, and I unfortunately don't have an example of this, and we can go back on this. I will show or send it out to everybody. So when you're going to title your blog, you can select that blog, say, say why SEO, we're going to go off the page that's on here. Why SEO is, is the uh, title. You're going to use an H1 tag. It's a H is heading and H1 gives it a specialized format on your website. I'm going to I'm now, because I'm, I'm, I'm in this hole deep. I'm going to have to email everybody. Make sure Kristen has your email. I'm going to email everybody like a, a walkthrough on this. Um, we're going to basically H1 through H3 are your header tags. So if you've ever seen on a blog, you'll see the big title. You're going to see like a semi-bold subtitle, and then you're going to see a bunch of text. And then you'll see another semi-bold title, and then a bunch of basic text. Now, those that main title is your category that how Google's going to categorize your, your blog on the internet. Now, I may say something like, Sarasota County, single family homes under $400,000 near the water. Dan, how'd you come up with that? I don't know. It was an interesting blog. A lot of people looking for it. I don't know. All these other pieces. Well, here's the cool thing that's going to happen. If I use an, if I don't do anything to that text, it's going to rate the same as all the ands and buts and all the other crap in, not really, but kind of in the paragraph. But if I change that one title to H1, it now has a hierarchy to Google. So now it's going to say, this is the name of the blog. And then here's all the subheadings, those subheadings that say like, different towns in, in Sarasota, whether it be locations. And then and there's a bunch of body. And so what this is going to do is it's going to create an easy hierarchy for Google to go through this information. 
Now, it's really simple. It's probably sounding a lot more complicated than it is. It's really just highlighting text and making a different format. And you know, under that is some there is some coding that's done in the background that you don't even know what it is, but it is it is categorizing that content so that Google can easily decipher what it is and then show that to the other side who are looking for that information. So now um I've gotten totally off of this. Why SEO? Yeah, we're we're pretty much past this. Um so a hierarchy of, of like the H1, H2, H3, there's body, there's all these bold, and those will have a hierarchy. I'm going to have to send this out. So please know that I'm not just saying all this and then it's just going to poof, disappear. Uh, this is, that's like the basics to blogging on that. So um, I want to kind of go back to this and then we're going to come back into the blog anyway. So uh, attracting all eyes, local search rankings. So improves local searches and rankings. We're kind of going over this. Backlinking. Does anyone know what backlinking is? Okay, so Kristen and I have talked about doing backlinking on our website because she has a lot of people moving from her area to mine. Now, I want to attract more people moving to my area from Canada. How can I do that? I can maybe get a little bit more help from someone up in that area that links my website. Now, she doesn't have to make a whole blog post that says, oh my God, Dan McKinnon is the best realtor in the whole entire world. No, nope, she can just put at the end of a blog post that says people looking or let's back up a little bit. Before coming up with blogs, you should do a little research. And doing that research, we'll come up with categories. We're going to get into this. But since I'm giving it an example, I wanted to be a little more thorough. During that research, you may find that like a lot of my clients come to Canada. So then I'm going to say, how can I write more blogs about selling your home in Canada? Now, it's going to make it more powerful if I link someone else's site inside my site. So I'm going to link. If you ever need a realtor in Ontario, Canada, please seek out my friend, Kristen. I'm going to link just the word Kristen to her website. Now, the power of that is insane. People don't realize this. The power of having a backlink to your website is so crazy. So one of the things about this is you have to find people to do it for you. And it's only going to help if, you know, a couple of realtors do it for you. That's great. And that's, it's actually really good. So, you know, we should be doing it with each other saying, Hey, have a great, you know, referral, write a blog about it and put, you know, if you're ever looking in, you know, moving from Venice, Florida to Kentucky, I don't know where, where who someone's on here, but you know, put them in the backlink and then have them do it to you. Now, the more you are backlinked, the more you will move up for credibility in Google's results. Now, the Google wants to give their clients the best possible information. So they're going to deliver credible sources. Now, what gives you a better, better credible source than someone else on their website saying, hey, go check this out? Now, the cool part is, is once you start doing local blogs and local stuff where you're writing, people might take that and go, hey, Dan wrote this really great blog. And they're going to link that blog link on their website. And that is the purpose of backlinking. It takes a long time. So understand that like, if you get one backlink a month, you're doing awesome. If you get someone to backlink, and here's the, the purpose though, is to get local churches, local organizations. If you donate to anyone, Say, hey, can I, I know this is going to sound a little, a little bad because you're donating. So I'm sorry if it brushed any toes on this one, but you know, figure out a way to get on their website, figure out a way. Hey, I understand I donate. I love doing it. Can I give you a little more and make me like, as like a preferred local expert. And it, it could be the farthest little corner of their website. It could be on a page that no one sees because we're just looking for that backlink. So I wanted to put that on here because that's like, a little tip that, you know, if you have questions about in the future, please hit me up on it. Um, but that actually helps a lot more than people think. Obviously, the content we have on our website, the way it looks and how people feel on it is entirely different. But backlinking is a big thing. So if you're ever like, hey, Dan, I'd love to write on my website and backlink you. Would you do it yourself? Hit me up. I'd love to do it. All right. Local SEO, kind of the same thing here. Um, targeting local keywords. Once again, keywords is another thing we're going to jump into a little bit later. So understand that when we blog, we want to use targeted keywords. And we're going to use, and keywords are basically words that come up. Um, like real estate is a keyword. Real estate is probably one of the most bland keywords that's not going to get us too far. Now, if I have a longer one, say like Sarasota real estate, that's now going to dwindle me down away from all of the other real estate in the world and just going to be like, hey, my keyword Sarasota real estate. So when you, when you type about, or when you blog about things and we're building out this content, 
you want to make sure that you hone in on a couple different strategic keywords for your area. So say you're writing about moving to Canada and you want to do the backlink with Kristen, you may want to talk about packing. The, you know, what else is another keyword for moving to the US America is probably um, whatever the, the, the border patrol or whatever that is there. You get in illegally. Should you add your location in every blog? No, I'm just curious. No, because it's on your website. I mean, you can, okay. you can. And, but like, here's the thing is I don't need to write like Sarasota over a million times, but like, for the most part, I'm in that blog about moving from Toronto. I may say like, you know, moving from Sarasota to, to this specific area. So you don't have to say it, but work, work in these things. So they come up more because yep. your, your blog is talking about moving, packing services for moving, um, you know, all these transitional things. And then on the top of it, you're going to say Sarasota. So if someone in the future types in moving to Canada from Sarasota, your blog would probably show up, even though your blog wasn't even named moving from Sarasota to Toronto. But because you supported and created a blog that answered a lot of questions, which don't get me wrong, we're going to get into a bunch of cool ideas and, and all this stuff in, in the future one here on how to come up with these ideas, how to come up with um, different topics and all that kind of fun stuff. But for right now, I want you guys to understand that long tail keywords. So this past, the, the tactical tip on here is long tail keywords. Now those long tail keywords are things like moving to Sarasota from Toronto. I'm not going to get viral. Remember we talked about virality. I don't care about virality. I care about eight people. I care about two people. I care about one person calling me to move. That's all I care about. So make sure that you are getting into it. Someone give me uh, someone that wants to talk. Maybe it's mod. Maybe it's, it's someone else. Just come on, come on here and give me like your location and, and an idea for a long tail keyword, or at least your location, and I, we can talk about one. Sounds good, guys. Hey, Dan. Yeah. It's Noel. Hi, Noel. How are you? I'm great. How are you? you? I am doing thanks. awesome. Today. Yeah, thanks. Today. You too. Um, so I live in Simcoe County. We're about an hour north of Toronto. So we, uh, we attract a lot of buyers coming out of the GTA who are looking for a real change in lifestyle. So I love showcasing our lifestyle here in Simcoe County, my walks in the forests, our lakes. Um, so that is right yes. there. Right. As yeah, you, so you know, as we're, as we're going through that, all I could think about is these small category, categoristic things you're saying, walk, lake, outside GTA. And because I know on one side is a huge city, a lot of people, a lot of traffic, and it sounds like you're, you're coming up with a lot of really nature, a lot of great things. So you're going to try to take some of that stuff and you're going to go, Hey, what would I be thinking if I'm living in this area and I want to move out? Maybe it's even starting out with like some of the local things and saying best places to hike within under two hours from GTA area, best mm -hmm. places to go for a, a scenic walk, blah, blah. Then people are going to start coming to this because we're not looking for moving from Toronto to this place, because if they live in Toronto, they probably are going to ask the realtor or they're probably going to ask someone they know. We're trying to get people in their thought patterns. Do you know what I mean? And what yeah. are they going to do first is long tail keywords. We're trying to get them early. We're trying to get them with these like little creative phrases that say, hey, here's, here's 10 awesome places. Here's three places to hike this weekend outside of this. Now, here's the special part. Once you start creating content like this that actually gives value, that actually is genuine, other people are going to read it and go, oh, this is great. Yes, you can utilize this on your social media. Yes, you can utilize this on YouTube videos. Yes, you can utilize it on everything. But this is just going to be a sitting piece that continually grows over time. Maud, how's it going? Hey, I'm good. Thank you. Um, I had a question about the integration. So I really like the idea for walks. I'm also kind of just out of Vancouver. So it's an area called the Tri-Cities. But mm -hmm. where I am more specifically Port Moody is walking distance to shops, markets, and it's also known as Brew Row because there's a bunch of microbreweries that mm -hmm. make the beer that they distribute literally all over the province and all over the country. So that's awesome. What are your thoughts on integrating things that are more alcohol and things like that into blog Love posts it. where I can write about the different types of beer that each of the breweries specialize in? So here's the thing. You know what the cool part about this is? I love it and I'm sober. So I don't even drink. I don't go to bars. I don't. That's the last place you'll find me. You know what? I love it. You know why? 
is because a large portion of the people coming to that area to understand, to know more, to get it, are going to do the one social thing that every American or Canadian likes to do is drink. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. I would go deep into that. I mean, okay. yes. And, and here's the coolest part is that and when we're all done talking about the web and blogging, the coolest part about all these blogs that we can write and the, all this blog stuff is content that comes from it, from social. There's so much other crap you can take from your blog and you can plug the whole blog into chat GPT and say, can you make this into an Instagram video reel with a script? Can you make this into a YouTube for uh, script for me to go into? You can do this, this, and this, because here's the thing. We're dual utilizing this. This is dual tonality on all of this stuff. We're writing it, but we're also coming up with creative st strategic information for content going forward because all the stuff we're hopefully running about is stuff you're talking about. Hey, mm -hmm. I live, we live in this awesome community that is surrounded by, by breweries and people love it and they're passionate about it. They come, there's live music. I'm, I'm assuming all this, by the way, because mm -hmm. yeah, I, like I would, the music. way you were talking about this is, mm -hmm. is for me, I want to feel this and you can feel that through writing. And the reason mm -hmm. this is so important and, and I'm a little bit passionate about it is because I think that social has gotten so over skewed on we put so much effort and so much time into these videos and all the stuff and then you get like 300 views and you're like are you kidding me because i posted on a the same day that taylor swift started dating somebody like you know, i mean whatever we know what it is but the thing about these blogs it's information that is registered it's boring as hell and so many people want to know the information so right. to go with what you were just saying for a second there mod i would take it even further and I would right. start writing this stuff. I'd get closer with those businesses and say, hey, I'd love to come in and take a picture, do some video for some social stuff, but I really want to write a blog. They all know me. <laughs> they all know me Perfect. and they always repost my stuff because I do all my meetings there because I can walk. And the cool thing is, is you can bring your kids See, um, awesome. and you can bring in outside food. So not only do they have snacks and that's... food, but you can order from Uber Eats or DoorDash or anything and See, show up with this, a picnic or bring food. All of this is is even better because you have these relationships. And so if anyone's listening mm -hmm. and you're like, I don't have the relationships, nor do I have the ideas, listen to this for a second. Now, Maud, what I want you to do is now write some really good blogs that like really right. are, are great in terms of like, they feel good, they're promoting this business. And then I want you to go have that person just email to them and say, hey, you mind sharing on like social or whatever? Or hey, if you ever want to just copy and paste it and drop it, on your website right. and just link it back. That would be really great. And you know, you don't have to say like, you don't have to put it on your social. You can just drop it on your website because here's the thing is you are now creating a niche with those relationships where most of the people are going to say, of course, that'd be awesome. You always bring business into us. So what kind of, what else can we do? And you're now mm -hmm. creating this because Google changed like four years ago and Google changed and it was a big change. I remember working with a handful. This was before I was in real estate. And so I was, you know, in the business big time. And we had they changed it from going a little bit more national to local. And they basically sent us an email, Google did. And they said, we are now going to prioritize more local things than, than larger things. And what happened was, is that all these high priority companies were paying PR firms to write all these blog posts and then get them blog posts again and again and again. And you'll get these small, like little restaurants taking over cities. And everyone's like, why is this happening when I want to know what happens around me? And now everybody knows that you can do near me, right? On This is the same time they changed the near me. So if you do restaurants near me, and that's when they were kind of teaching everybody that. Now, the coolest part is what they did is they made it more advantageous or more powerful to have a local church backlink to your website than CNN. Let me say that again. A local church is going to help your website more backlinking than CNN would because of the way that they looked at how the world is changing and how localities, and because at the end of the day, is they're selling ad space to these small businesses. They know CNN is already spending money with them to do ad space. They're now going after and saying, hey, mom and pop, we have a space for you because we know you're in the community more, we wanna sell you, and they wanna get up to $400 a month from them for PPC because they make because CNN's already paying. So basically that happened like six years ago. So ever since then, that's why backlinking is so important. And I know I've tangent on backlinking. We're like two minutes from our end hour and I'm not even finished. But backlinking and being local and creating that all tied together, you will have no idea how quickly, especially if you're strategic with your long tail keywords, which once again, in the future, future episodes, we're going to get into Google ad tools and where we can research and come up with our targeted keywords. And we're going to be able to go through and figure out, hey, what are other keywords that we can dive in deeper off of these like Venice and, and, or, you know, say the bar scene or, or local trails to hike or this or that. What up, Noel? Hey, Dan. So just if I can circle back to these yeah. long tail keywords for a sec. So mm -hmm. 
I think we're speaking mostly about blog posts, but if I'm doing say a reel on Instagram, how important is um, my caption and including those long tail keywords? Is that like super important for SEO optimization? So or I SEO? would think of, no, 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 it's you're, you're completely right. We are definitely talking about long tail keywords from the start of things on, on more of the content side of your website, because it's really what people are looking for through Google what they're typing in. Now, I am under the belief that Google is the best at search, which we, I think we all can say that. I'm under the belief that Instagram really knows the power of SEO since they started making SEO, literally Instagram SEO important last year. So your captions and everything is important. Now, Go even further and understand that on Instagram and Facebook, you can search and it searches phrases. It doesn't search titles. It searches phrases. So you can search Italian food in Venice, Florida. It's going to come up with some social media posts and they're not titled. They're not even like the title thing. So I would, I'm not going to say factually, there's no facts out there on that, but I would venture to say it is better to go, go towards a content strategy of using long tail keywords as, as the strategy, because it is so strategic to a point, it's going to be a place where people want to share more of that information because they're going to say, Hey, this person answered my question. Look at all the people that have gone viral on TikTok. It's not all, I mean, forget the funny ones and forget all that stuff. It's usually answering a question. Look what I did when I bought this and look how it works. Look what happens when you do this, this, and this it's giving you the full gamut. So I think that having the same things on the three best hikes you must do under 90 minutes, 90 minutes from Toronto is totally a content piece. If you can do the research on the backside and go people in Toronto are searching for places to hike. You didn't, they didn't ever say they only care about 90 minutes. They only care about places from Toronto, maybe whatever it is you are now you're jumping to a little bit of a conclusion to say, Hey, if these three things line up or these things in the research line up, we can go to say, they're probably going to search for this instead of saying three great things to do outside of Toronto. That's going to be so watered down and a million people are going to have that three great nature trails to get away from this city busy life of Toronto. Now. Yeah. We're getting creative with our words, but still our long tail keywords are, you know, things to do outside of Toronto or, or whatever that is. Did that answer Thanks, your question? Jen. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Um, what else was I going to say? Kristen, we're out of time crunch. Can I keep going? Wait, I have one quick question. You ignored my hand. Because I'm stressed out, Sean. I have four more slides to go. Keep going. What was your question? Uh, how long uh, should your blogs be? Or does that matter? And how often should you blog? Uh, what do you think? Like, what do you recommend? Okay. So that's a, that's a fantastic question. Um, your blogs should be over. There is no magic number. There's not, but I would say to get some sort of content to put on there and make it look all right. Try to shoot for 800 words or more. Now I probably scared a bunch of people. Oh yeah. On how often I would do as often as possible. If you can commit to three times a week, I would do three times a week, but just like anything, just like everyone says, oh, YouTube, you have to post on this and be consistent. Who owns YouTube? Google does. So if you are writing blogs, I would say be consistent because if you're consistent, then Google will be like, hey, look at all this. Look at this website adding new information all the time. They must be relevant. They must. There's be no reason you can't do three times a week. I'm just saying because you can literally just take a blog and rewrite it in chat GPT. Like you don't even so have we're, to come we up are going to stuff. and. And if anyone's sitting here being like, oh my God, Dan, this guy is talking all this great stuff. I love what he's saying, but I am so stressed out because I ain't got time to write. Friends, we're in the day and age of AI. AI, I'm losing it. AI, we're in the, in the day and age of AI where all of this is pretty much done for you. So we're going to jump back in here real quick. So I wrote this blog on Sarasota County short-term rentals, what you need to know. It was really the most basic blog, but one of the big things is I do know here in Sarasota is short-term rentals are huge and people don't know the laws. So um, we're going to just jump past this because I already just talked about all that. Here's some analytics behind this one blog. And this is the reason that Kristen and I kind of were like, hey, this is a really important topic. And I think that this is important for people. I wrote this blog in May, May 4th of this year. In the past 90 days, 
it is the top page on my website. It has 632 views over just the past 90 days, and it was written in the spring. It is now on my generic pages, so not my MLS pages. It is the most highest viewed one in 90 days, and that's out of 618, 6,182 views. 632 views have been on that page. 529 users have done that. Now, if you looked into that and only, you know, 1.2, so a couple people have came back to it, our, you know, average time is 54 seconds. So you'd have to look at the blog and see how long people are reading it for. Um, and a total views of 2,300 views. Now that was a blog post that ChatGPT helped me write. And it's one of my regular main blogs that I write on an everyday basis. It just happened to hit some key chords. Now, for me, I don't know if I've ever had, I've had a handful of viral stuff happen on social. I don't know if I've ever had 529 people click off of that. I've had like a, a real hit like 800,000. I've had millions of engagements on my profile in a couple month period of time. I've never had this many people go to my website and register. So, and I can break this down and I'm just showing you guys this. So when we get to the analytics, I can break down more for you and show, Hey, who, you know, here's the step. And there's some really cool tools and analytics that will show us like from this page, where did they go? And there, this will all help us do things over time and change our, change what we're doing. Now I show this and you're like, don't Dan, there's so much freaking numbers here. All I'm showing you here is the power of blogging. That's all I'm showing you because right here, this 632 views, it's, it's honestly, it's the dumbest blog in the world. It tells you 10 things you should look. It's not dumb. It's, it's a really great blog. It's just for me, it's general information that I know about this area. And I don't realize people are looking for it. Now, how I came up with this is was doing a lot of research, which we will get into at some point, doing research into these keywords and understanding what are people looking for when they're moving here? What are they asking? What are these questions they're searching for? And the amount of emails that I get from this, I probably get two, three emails a week from this now. And people are just asking like, Hey, I have a question about short-term renting. I'm like, Oh damn it. I don't know any, I don't, I only know what I wrote in the blog. You know, I'm not a big, that much of a help, but that is the, that right there is the piece where we're creating that like, know and trust before we even know who the client is. I had people calling me saying, Hey Dan, I saw your blog. Can you help me out with this one question I have? I'm not a lawyer. Why are people calling me? But that's the cool stuff about content. And I wanted to get more into this dry stuff today. Um, so content strategy. Susan, you waving at me? thought Susan was waving at me. I wanted to stop for her. All right. Um, a content calendar. We're a little bit past this. So I'm probably going to save this part um, and jump into the, the content strategy and helping everybody come up with a three-month co calendar, content calendar strategy. Um, but I'm going to show you how I did it. And I'm going to copy and paste it into the chat. Um, this is how I actually come up with a lot of my, my blogging ideas. I asked ChatGPT, I say, this is literally the one I came up with this morning because I wanted to show you uh, what it would come up with. So I just wrote this. I can give you guys this prompt or you can change it up. It probably isn't. It's, not, it's nothing special. I just wrote it up. Give me a 90-day content calendar for blogging. I want to blog every day, but transition between five locations. I would insert five different locations yourself. Uh, these are all within the Sarasota area. So some of them are neighborhoods like Lakewood Ranch and Palmer Ranch are neighborhoods. I want to cover these four different topics, family, lifestyle, entertainment, rainy day, and beach life. Obviously, you can see that some of them are have a lot to do with real estate and then some don't at all. Please give me a 90-day list of blogging title and three keywords to focus on so I can grow my website through blogging. Now, my chat GPT is a little bit more tweaked to me because I use my profile on it which is part of like the, you pay monthly and you can use your profile. So it gave me some cool stuff and I had to work on it a little bit. So here it gave me a full 90 day and I'm just going to show you 10 days of it right here. So you can see on the left here, we have week one in Sarasota. It says Sarasota's best friendly neighborhoods. So that's going to be the title of our blog. And then the keywords are going to be Sarasota, family friendly and neighborhood. Now I can get a little bit, this is just, this is what ChatGPT gave me. So I can now take this and go a little bit further with it. But you can see through the rest, it's day two is me a day in the life of living in Sarasota, top entertainment spots in Sarasota, rainy day activities, the best beaches. And it's just going to give you all these ideas. And the, th the basis is, is I did a, I did a 90 day because I think that if you're, if you're jumping into this, it's really cool if you're able to do one of these a day. So if you're able to, and here's the thing is I'm going to take them. I'm going to take, look at number one there. I'm going to take Sarasota's best family friendly neighborhoods. And I'm going to take the keywords and I'm going to go back to chat GPT and say, I need to know, I need to, I need you to write the best format 
for a blog post. And then it's going to come up with the best format. And then you're going to do a little more research and you're going to plop it in there. It's probably going to take you 10 to 15 minutes to write a really good blog. If you were on the one with um, Luca, he showed how to write like a really, really fast blog. If you want to get like a little bit more creative, you take a little bit more time, go through that content, make sure your, your long tail keywords are in there. Make sure you have some decent images. And here's the thing is when you put those images in there, save the name. When you upload an image on any of these websites, you can save the name of these things. So if you upload a picture of CST, it's of Toronto, you know, all you Canadians. If you upload one in Toronto, name it, name it. Toronto downtown. Because now that will search it in Google. There's also meta terms in all these too. So you can add, add some description and all this kind of stuff. All that stuff helps. The names of your files you upload to your website actually matter. So I know I kind of jumped over the content strategy and chat GPT stuff because I do think that we're going to go through and write um, one together and I want to do it with you guys. And then that way you can see the H, H tags and then we're actually going to post it on my website. And so that way we can see how H tags work, how the how a whole structure of a blog is going to work. But today was really just to hopefully awaken everybody and show them that a lot of this really boring shit can turn a lot of clients. And so it's just to make sure that you work this in because social is social media is awesome. It is absolutely wonderful. It's so amazing, but it is not the only thing that can bring us business. And so I just want to make sure that everyone understands that. I know I jumped through a lot. Who has questions? Because I just pounded through a bunch of crap for 70 minutes. The silence is definitely. I need some. I need some music going right now. <laughs> so, um, Kristen's gonna drop in this PDF in the chat. I think she can, or if not, she's gonna drop it in somewhere on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. I have this checklist I put together over the first three. Obviously, the art of blogging we really flew through. Um, but these, this checklist should be good for you. So if you do have a website, if you have a CRM, if you have anything like that, go through this. So the first one is like audit your uh, current website and lead capture opportunities. Audit them. What what does audit mean? Go through them. Write down. I have this many forms on my website. This is how many opportunities, or this is my call to action. This is what's going on. Go through there, find your landing pages, your lead form. So landing pages are places where people end up, whether it be from an ad, from a Facebook uh, post or anything like that. Any page that's not your homepage. A landing page is your homepage, but what other landing pages do you have? Uh, you, we will talk about implement A-B testing at some point. We skipped over that because that's too crazy. CRM integration, only if you were using a CRM, make sure you're good on that. The how-tos will kind of talk you through how to do each one. Uh, and there's some tools in there. Obviously, we didn't go over Google Analytics. We didn't go over AREFs. We didn't go over Moz. We didn't go over some of the tools. But this page should be able to help you go through and talk or go through and see some of the things you should change on your website. Oh, my goodness, my hair, guys. All right. Nobody has questions? I think I lost everybody anyways. Like nine people. Just I know started. Richard has a question. Uh, not really. I mean, in the chat, we were talking about, oh, I didn't even see the chat. Um, the chat, the chat's been going the, fire, Dan. So don't feel bad. Lots of people have been loving this. The chat's actually uh, really the backlinking part of it all. So going to like all your vendors and like local community stuff, like anybody that you work with, home inspectors, all those things, getting them to like, you know, hey, I'll write a blog about you, um, possibly yes. have them share it on their website and then backlinking you on their website. Completely. And you don't, and, and here's, the, here's the one thing and it's like really needs to be well known because if someone asks me that, I may be like, well, what am I getting out of that? I don't want to have you on my website. It don't need to be shown on the front page. It's, yeah. it's a backlink. So here's the thing is, is come up with a street. There's companies that do this. There's companies that like, I'm not going to tell you to hire them because they're like, they're $2,500 a month or something like that. Um, but it's a very, very big, big deal. And so to get anyone you're working with and you can tell them, and, and it's, that's the frustrating and struggle of it all is that most people are going to go, I don't know how to do that. You're going to ask your nonprofit organization you work with, they're going to go, I don't know. Do you? And so that's the one thing is, is like, you have to get a little creative, you know, whether it's come up with like, Hey, you know, figure like here, here's the content. I'm going to email you what to, what to copy and paste onto this website or whatever it is. And maybe it's something like, 
if you come to, you know, you can get creative on the other side. It's like, Hey, I would love for you to post them on your website. If someone uses me, I will donate 10% of the closing towards this organization. Yeah. Honestly, if you've got a client out of it, it's going to be worth it. And you're kind of doing something anyways. And it's just, it's just to get that on there. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're just trying to make the relationship to, to say to someone like, Hey, I'm trying to benefit just like I'm benefiting you. And you can say, Hey, here's my website. I get, it's like, you know, look at mine. Like I get 6,200 people a month coming to my website. I'd love to, to have some of that traction move to you if they went to my vendor page. So if you're, but if you're writing blogs anyway, if like, let's say you write one blog a week, like if you're doing three or four blogs a week, but one blog a week, you're kind of focusing on a vendor. Like this is the experience I mm -hmm. had with this home inspector, or this is the restaurant we yep. went to. And you actually send that blog. Can you backlink it through them sharing your blog post? If they put it on their website somehow, if okay. they put on their website, like here's a blog that Richard wrote, Richard Parham wrote uh, about our restaurant and then they paste it, but they would have to make sure to highlight. It's literally as simple as highlighting your name and just writing, you know, his website, but that's yeah, the so part. You do, the most, you do most of the work for them though. And all they have we to do to, is that highlight and backlink. So we used to do, when I worked in the car industry, when I ran my ad advertising agency, we used to work a lot with car dealerships. So what, what they used to do is they used to partner with different organizations to, to donate to them. But we used to write and say to them, hey, to do this, we need you to post this page and we'd email the page on your website. And it was a no-go if not. It was, you need to do this. And we would do one a month. And they would get one, one back like a month. And that was that important for them to get that. So it's whatever you can do to get it done. You make the relationship, you make the, you know, Hey, I'll jump on your website for you and figure out how to do it. Like whatever it is, people aren't going to do that, but you never know who's going to have that business. If it's a friend of yours that, you know, Hey, it's the bartender. And it's like, yeah, here's our website, but we don't know how to do that. Okay, cool. I'm going to write, you know, best realtor in the area, link my name, boom, done. Like it doesn't need to be. There's not like a ton of science because it is a hard thing to do. If you think about it, it's like not like everyone's just going to jump into their website and like, oh, let me go create a page and do all this. So you have to make sure you meet them in the middle and offer some sort of incentive to say this. Got Holly it. has a question about SE or about uh, yeah. geotagging. Sorry, Richard, if you're, I thought you were done. Who, Kristen has a question? Sorry, uh, Kelly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, why? Kristen, do you have your hand up for Kelly? Yeah, I did. Kelly, and then Miriam has a question. Okay. Right okay. Kelly, so, how are you, Kelly? Kelly, get in here. Kelly, hey, Miriam. Kelly, do, 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 do. Oh, there she is. She, Kelly, you're Muted. on mute. Kelly, Kelly's new you to computers. In, you came in all hot and heavy, and I liked it for a second, but now you just can't hear you. Kelly, you're embarrassing me right now. Take yourself off mute. Still on mute. Okay, I'm, ba go, I'm back. Okay, sorry. Sorry, y'all. I just try to push all these buttons. Um, I'm a boomer. Okay. Um, so are you talking about when you're naming the images? Are you talking about geotagging? No. Oh, something different. So ge geotagging, you can. Ge so when you save an image on, let me see for a second. If anyone's actually interested in me, give me a second. I'll actually pull up my website. While you're doing that, I was going to give um, something that you were just talking about, about the vendor thing. So I have an inspection company I work with a lot, and they reached out to me and were like, hey, we want to put you as a preferred realtor and just give us a review. I gave them a review, and now when you, they, they posted it on their website, and whatever they did, like That's if you Google video. my name, they're... Now, if you Google Kelly Clark Realtor, their website comes up, but it has my review. So like literally it just kind of ranked me my name by Googling their company. So that's just an idea. Like you could offer to do a review for them to put you on their website or something, even though, you know, I didn't ask they did it, but it works. That's a, that's a great, a great way to, to get them to post it too. So like, that's another great way to say like, Hey, let's, um, let's do this. I want to write you a review, but maybe you can sure. take the review and put it on your website and then link it back to who I am. And that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. can everybody see my, this is my website right here. Does everybody see it still screen sharing? No, you're yeah. on content strategy slides. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. Do you have two screens? No, it's the same screen, but hold on a second. Share screen. All right. You guys can see that now. Yeah. All right. So on this, we're going to have to redo this because we're left anyways. So this is the title. 
Um, and then we're going to have the, the post file name is just going to happen itself. This is my website. And it's mostly going to be a little bit different on your own. Um, but honestly, it's probably very, very similar. Um, this is just going to have like author and your category and you're going to have different categories. These actually do matter. So we're going to talk about that in the future, but basically it's just categorization. So we're going to call it beach life meta title. You're going to use ChatGPT for all of this. You're going to write the blog. And at the end of the blog, you're going to say, hey, ChatGPT, can you give me meta titles and keywords? Meta description doesn't matter anymore. Google doesn't use meta description. So if you ever see meta description, feel free to write something and maybe they'll start using it again, but they don't use it. So you don't have to write anything. Um, your meta tags are going to, or your meta title is going to be the title of the blog. And it's going to be something like Sarasota. I don't know. You're going to come up with it and ChatGPT is going to give it to you. Same with the keywords. It's going to be very similar on that. Um, the next piece, mine does a two-page thing going here. So when you add your pictures, let's see if we can find a random JPEG to upload here. So when you upload your full, your... AI guy. So when you upload this guy, it's going to give you the option. It should. I don't know where it's going. All right. It's not going to show it. Anyways, two things. It's just going to show you that meta description like that. It's going to just show you the title. So I always rename the, the photo. So if you see this photo right here, um, Oh, it's not showing my screen again, is it? It just was some long names. So you're just going to write like whatever the area, CS to key, underscore, something, something, and then save it as the image. Under that, though, it's going to tell you uh, the name of the picture. You're going to just rename it something like searchable. So if you're uploading like downtown, are you in Dallas, Kelly? You're Austin. You're in Dallas? Dallas? Okay. Um, you're going to put like the Sitco, I forget what sign it is, like the, the gas sign in downtown Dallas. You're going to like literally name it this is the freaking running horse sign or whatever sit go sign in downtown Dallas, because the moment that someone goes to search for sit go sign in downtown Dallas, your picture is going to come up. If they click on your picture, then they'll be like, Oh, there's some information more about Dallas. Now this isn't going to like help you sell a house tomorrow, but what's going to happen is you're never going to know when someone's searching about Dallas and that picture comes up and you're going to you know be able to do it. It's also going to help you. It's going to support the whole like, know, and trust from Google thing. So if you're using images that you're creating custom titles for, so it's no, it's not the geotags though. So geotags are, can be good, but there's not always used anymore. So what other questions? Let me stop. Screen. Miriam has a question. Do you want to come in here, Miriam? Or do you want me to ask you for you? Sure. Um, so the only website that I have is the company and they call it website. I think it's stupid. It's just an about page. I can't mm -hmm. control anything of it. So I was thinking about starting my own website, um, but because, you know, I don't know how to build one. Um, I don't quite want to, you know, set aside a budget for it just mm -hmm. yet. I'm new to real estate. Well, I've been in real estate for about an, a year and a half now, but okay. um, mm -hmm. so I was looking into Wix or the likes of Wix. Do you even recommend those? Because I've read in places that those don't really do well for SEO. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't recommend those. And I know that that's really great to get jump started, and you can get some like great visual pieces done and it may look good, but it doesn't actually search well because it's a templated website. Now, templated websites have a lot of junk code in them. Now, junk code is hard for Google to like work around to go get to your content. So when you're building a website, this is like the most stupid explanation because it, I don't think it really matters that much. But when you build a website, you really want it to be as light as possible. You're not going to have a ton of junk code in there. And when things like Wix, where they, they're they able to allow people to change things in and out so easily, it comes with a lot of junk code. And so what I would recommend is going to WordPress, buying a domain for under 10 bucks. I think if you make a account on GoDaddy, they give you on a, they give you your first domain for like $2. I'd find a domain that has something to do with you or um, what you're doing, your location, like, you know, Dan does Sarasota, danmckinnon.com, you know, whether it be your name or a phrase, I'd then figure out how to link that um, 
if you, Miriam, if you need help on this, you can just t text me. I'll send you whatever Google, whatever Google information or YouTube information. Um, but it's it's pretty simple to do to start just a blank WordPress site. Now the coolest part is is everything we're talking about is in visualization. Yeah, we talked a little bit about user experience, but if you don't have a website, it's best to start one. Um, kind of like Kelly said, the fact that her name pops up the top of when she searches hers, but it's not her website shows how important it is to have a website, Kelly. Um, and so I think you have one and yet their website pops up before yours. Oh boy. Anyways. So the point is though, is I would use WordPress. It is a free, free platform that as long as you're paying for your website hosting, it's the one thing you do have to pay for is website hosting. You can get that through GoDaddy or any other website host or anything. You may have to get a friend to help you do some of this stuff. But either way, you own it, and it is a good platform for blogging. It's like one of the best platforms for blogging because you own the whole site. No one can take it away from you. No one can delete it when you don't pay your bill other than the hosting bill, which is pretty cheap. Um, and so I would, I would do it there. I would do it right from the start because you're going to get right from the platform, right from the get-go. You're going to get results. I, re I recommend highly you just get someone to make it for you, though, if you don't know what you're doing, because yeah. a company that, that knows what they're doing. Um, and then if you want to change something down the road, if you don't have the budget, it. though, if you don't have the budget and you li re really are like, uh, Dan, I want to bootstrap today, you can go get a yeah. domain name for Super Jeep. If not, go find on five or two someone to set up a, 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 a good WordPress site. Most of the time they're. But the thing about that is, too, is like then we run into junk templated crap you know what I mean for the most part is if you really want to start go, uh, going for it just go ahead. craig you got hey, Dan, yeah. um have you ever used agenta do you know if they're kind of one of those junk websites so it's junk code magenta no agenda so oh, specifically I've never... it's like a company that like luxury presence is another big one they're super expensive yeah. but agenta is like 150 I... bucks a month it's yeah a i i i haven't um like I said, I use Sierra Interactive. I don't even use WordPress because Sierra Interactive is my full CRM and my blogging and my whole website together. Now, I used to build websites. So for me, I've been thinking about starting my own thing, but it's still even with that, it's so much work to handle. Now, I try to use one, like I have my own complaints about Sierra. I have my own issues with it. It's still a very, very good module and a very good platform, but it's hard to make those decisions whether what works and what costs versus what, needs to be done for can done. I don't know if that made any sense. I feel like I can constantly tweak my website and I'm really not going to end up getting too, too much more out of it. Um, but at the same time, if you, if it's a, if it's a platform that allows you to write and get your content out there away from anyone else's website, I'd say it's probably a good website being a company website. If you're on someone's company website, if you're on a team, get your own website, I don't care if you're on a team, get your own website. So when people search for you, you're found because your brand is worth way more than your team could ever be. Your future is worth way more than your current brokerage thinks it is. And you are the person that's going to carry the going from there. So Agenta, if it works, I have and honestly, there's so many out there that are great that I could probably sit here and be like, oh, I don't know. Like there's so many good ones at the end of the day, ask about their SEO, be like, Hey, and I would ask other users. I would say, Hey, how do you, and you don't, even if they don't want to answer, then go Google their own stuff. Google some agents that you know use it, or if you don't know, ask Agenta. Be like, hey, who uses you, and how well do they perform on search en search engine optimization, and how how is that controlled? You know, do I have to pay you to do stuff? Because if not, I want to be able to have a platform that I control. Because everything we just went over is how websites are built and how SEOs are built. It's just a lot of it, though. If you can do this on an everyday basis, you will make a website where people will constantly be coming to for free organic stuff. The hard part is, is no one wants to do it consistently. No one wants to follow the plan and no one knows how to do the plan. So they hire all these SEO experts and web experts and pay two to $4,000 a month, which totally get it. Totally fine. We don't all have that expertise feeling, but if you're in this call, this is your opportunity to say, Hey, I can now take off and do this stuff because I'm in a platform that, it, that there's enough people that can say, Hey, what am I doing with blog or not? I showed you one blog post. It's not like there's many others that you have hundreds of clicks where it's like, you know, you just need a place for someone to land on your, your stuff and make it your own. Because even if you put out 12 pieces of content, that's a lot of content. 12 pieces, 12 pages on the internet is nothing. So it's, it's, it's the long stretch. And if Miriam, if you're still, Miriam's still on here, if you do start, know that there is going to be a time lapse. You're going to have to wait six to seven, if not eight months for your website to season. What does that mean? It means that you'll be writing a bunch of shit that no one's going to be looking at unless you tell them to go. Now, my website, 
I wake up and I'm like, oh, how did hundred people go to that website or that web page? And I didn't even tell anyone about it. I'll write blogs now. I don't post it on my social media. All my blogs are, I've never, the one that I shared that has 680 people, I've never shared that anywhere. That just went on my website and just kind of went into the interwebs. So it's just one of those things where you need to just, you know, if you're thinking about Agenta, just make those questions. Hey, who, who's doing well using this platform and how's their SEO? Okay. And then go look it up yourself. Hope that answered the question. Yeah. Another one, sorry, just throw it out there, but if you do agent locator, I don't know what, but when you say no budget, I know it, but if you do just the site on agent locator, it's only 50 bucks a month and you can do blogs and like for an extra 20, you get the CRM too. You just don't get leads or anything. There is a startup cost with it, but 50 bucks a month, if you can budget that. That's extremely cheap. My CRM costs $450 a month. Well, I I spend $550 for the CRM, the leads, and all the AI, all the special features. But uh, no, just the website without the CRM is 50 bucks a month. With the CRM, I think it's like $180. That's a, that's a killer deal. So if you're, if you're up there and and that's the other thing too, is like, if everybody's on here and wants, has questions, go onto the Facebook group or, you know, figure out a way to, to let Kristen and Sean know like, Hey, I'd really love to know more about the websites and available and this and that, what we should look for. And we can, we can put that into here because like I said, this series at the end of it, I really want everybody to walk away with a better understanding of their own websites and how to control it for free leads. And it, honestly, it was, it was Luca who talked a, a couple months or a couple weeks ago. I forget when he was on, but it, you know, Luca even made it and, and I just love his attitude towards these large lead sites that are just killing people. Like I know one of my, one of the agents that's, you know, with real that I, I talk to a lot, that I support up in Michigan and she pays $8,000 a month in, in Zillow leads, $8,000 a month. Now don't get me wrong. She closes all of them. She pays them off. It is fine. But the thing is, is she's sitting there going, Dan, I don't know what I'm going to do if I shut them off. And now I don't ever want anyone to get in that situation. And Luca brought up this and he's like, no, I want more people to, to get more leads than themselves and, and create a form where we're not giving away half our commission. And I'll tell you what, as someone that came into this industry, like as a business owner, and I looked at everything from business owner, I agree with him. I hate seeing every one of these people throw away 96 grand a year on Zillow leads. Yeah, she's killing it. She's going to close three, $400,000 a year, but a hundred of it is going towards lead systems. And the thing about that is, is like, if we can change that formulation, we will all get, be better off for it. We'll have stronger businesses and be stronger individuals that are helping other people instead of letting these corporations come in and control all this shit for us. So yeah, it's like owning your business instead of renting your business. Literally. And it's, it's not fun. The shit that we just talked about, it's, it's not glorious. It doesn't feel good. There's no dopamine rushes in blogging. There's no feeling good about this shit. It's super boring, but you know, what's hard is just staying consistent. Like I'm not great. I'm not even great at it. I was even thinking about putting all this shit together. I'm like, dude, I'm the worst person to talk about this when I'll go like 17 days straight blogging. And then it'll be like three weeks without it. You know what I mean? So don't get me wrong. Like this is extremely hard stuff, but it is the differentiator between paying eight grand a month and not. Because our industry is going that way. Like you, if you asked anyone five years ago, if they were going to pay eight grand towards leads in a month, they would have said no. Now, totally. You can see it. In, in four years from now, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. So I'd much rather own my little corner of my world than to be renting it. We went way over. Guys. That's okay. So this if is you guys so have been amazing. chilling, if you've been chilling, if you've been hanging with us, I appreciate it. Yeah, been Has everybody helpful. been enjoying this? Has this been like helpful? Because I haven't seen the chat and like I genuinely really do care about like giving mm-hmm. you guys the best and I want to make sure that you guys are getting something from this. There's 11 this people in this room and we all stayed half an hour past because it was so good. Yeah, it was a lot. Like, people never stay this long, but the chat was going nuts. Chris, one more thing. I've had three people said they couldn't get in. So we got to double check that. Are you passing off the wrong? The wrong? No, I didn't pass off anything. They said they just went to the regular link. Uh, it was like Jason. Or, sorry, my dog is going nuts. Um, quiet, oh, Cassidy. Snoopy. Um, that's fine, Cassidy. Was sorry, uh, Jason and Caitlin couldn't get in legally blonde, so I don't know if there's something going on. They said that the registration went dead, so I don't know if they have an old one or whatever, but I just want to double check that. Now it's the same yeah. link every week. You know, it's funny. I sent you I... their emails to add to the email yeah. thing, just to be yeah. Clear. Dan, how much time right. are you spending blogging every week? Like, right, the actual writing, uh, the actual writing, uh, just for my website, right? Because I, yeah, yeah just for my website, um. Two to four hours a week. Two to four hours. Yeah, I think I I think it takes me about fifteen minutes to write a blog now because I I can basically do it a, a handful of different ways. So I'll come up with those 
like that sheet I gave you guys, I'll come up with like 90 and I'll just save the 90 in a, in a, in like a Google form. Um, and I have it broken down and I'll just delete it when I actually make it. So I'll just copy it and I'll copy those. I'll copy the title. I'll bring it into ChatGPT and say, Hey, I am writing a blog about this. This is the title. I need a breakdown, um, of the blog. And then I'll start doing research myself because I like putting in a handful of different things to ChatGPT because I've been getting a little bit frustrated with like some of the response I've been getting. So I've been just doing outlines of blogs and then, uh, figuring out how to like slice a slice and dice some of my own words. Um, but usually it's about 15 to 20 minutes from start to finish. The one thing I'm struggling with is pictures because I have a lot of the pictures myself. It's just uploading them, getting them to size right and all that. Um, that slows down the process. But so I'd say about that, but I blog on three different websites now. So for, for social media, like uh, for real estate stuff. So like I have my other local pages. So that's, I think you could probably set three hours together on one day and do your full week of blogging. Do you use chat GPT for the paid version? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I use that with AI PRM and I use, I also use with it. I use my profile. So if you don't, if you're on the paid one, make sure you go to the settings and you can go into your profile and you can, you can basically write like a really long prompt about yourself and it will use that prompt within the entire conversation. And I noticed it actually did, does help a ton because Kristen was coming up with shit and it was horrible. And then I sent her my mine and mine literally did mine was, she's like, did chat GPT give you this? I'm like, yeah, it's like way better. And like, they made sense. So I will tell you that that profile, I think is starting to learn who I am, which is a little bit scary. <laughs> nice. As someone that doesn't like, like real life, I'm totally scared of AI, but I'm using it like crazy. So I'm not really pumped about the fact that I keep on telling AI who I am. Like, I'm like, I'm Dan McKinnon. Here's my social security them, number. Them. I, exactly. My wife says, uh, anytime AI does anything, she thanks AI. She's yeah. like, Thank if you. they take over, she's gonna. Re they're gonna remember yeah. her. But she said thank you every time they exactly. helped her out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, no, I I think that um, the, I I use ChatGPT a lot, and I still use a lot. It's just the only one thing is is like I will never let it give me generic answers. I'll always try to slice and dice things up just so I'm a little bit different than the next person because I am a little bit terrified that Google at one point will start putting a big stop to people that copy and paste it off of AI modules because they do sound very, very similar. Um, so that's just my kind of thought. Uh, Luke got a great one where you take the transcript from YouTube and turn that into a blog. That one's, yeah, that one's, that, that is like such a good, that tool, if you don't have that one, is just so awesome because that is actually how I actually get a lot of information for some of my blogs. I'll just actually look up on YouTube a, a video that's similar to the blog I'm writing. And I'll actually just take the full transcript and I'll ask ChatGPT, can you, can you summarize this for me? And then I'll just read it myself. Even if it's not even taking the information, I'll just read it and be like, oh, I didn't know that about the area that I live in. You know what I mean? So it's, there's always something cool to, to go off of like that. All right. Well, All right, we're, we're going to wrap questions? this one up. I feel like we're just like nine, everybody's like getting into their emails. They're just like, yeah, this has been long enough. All right. We're just fucking out of here. It was super helpful. Thank you. Uh, that of was great. Of course. Man, I'm honestly. so glad. I'm so glad. And like I said, we're going to keep it going. And by the end of it, we'll have an actual outline. Somebody can go back through all this. And like the, the to-do list, the checklist is actually the full 10, 10 sections. This is just, I didn't want to over evaluate. So we're going to, it'll be cool when we're done. And if anyone has questions, put it up on the Facebook. Um, don't, don't message me. I want to be able to answer questions on the open. So, if, you know, sometimes people have questions that other people have too. So put it on the Facebook group and tag me because I don't go on Facebook, but I'll go on there. Dan's going to be here once a month, by the way, guys, doing like an AI thing. This is part of our mastermind now. So one a, one a month with Dan. Yeah, we're going to be going through this. We're going to be going through, and it'll be good because at the end, we're going to go through a lot of like how AI can help us get, you know, get through this. And, and also taking some of this too, is like, we can take a lot of these checklists and we can do a lot of this stuff and, and turn into like every quarter you can, um, look over your business. You can say, Hey, ChatGPT can go through this, you know, this list and update it to giving me one every quarter. So then that way everyone's doing this stuff and it's, you know, it's very, very important. So I'm excited guys. Thank you, Dan. Dan. I'm going to be breaking you. these clips yeah. down using Opus and AI and posting it. So you guys can see how Opus. I, I've been You're getting welcome, good at Sarah. Opus. It's, it's actually really good now. Everyone loves Opus. 
It's it's right. it's actually crazy how good it is now. My dog's going nuts, so I gotta take her to the vet. So I gotta go. <laughs>